This is Mac OS Ken. Ming Chi Kuo sings a song of doom. News around new software day. And Russia sneaks into my phone 14s. It is Tuesday, the 13th of September, 2022. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash macOSCan. This show is also sponsored by Simply Safe, the right way to protect your home. Who knows your home better than you do? One of the things I love about Simply Safe is how much you get to put in to making it work. What do you need? One outdoor camera? A couple of indoor cameras? No cameras, but maybe extra door sensors or window sensors. Your home is different than everybody else's, which is why Simply Safe lets you pick and choose exactly what you need to keep it safe. And getting it set up is way simple. I had my door sensors, keypad, and base station set up and running in well under an hour. Now, once your work is done, Simply Safe goes to work with 24 7 professional monitoring. They're ready to send help the moment it's needed, whether you're sleeping soundly at home, working away at work, or vacationing miles away. Monitoring plans start at less than a buck a day with no long term contracts and no hidden fees. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash macOS can. Go today and claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring. S-I-M-P-L-I. Go to simplysafe.com slash macOS can. iPhone 14 Plus is a disaster. And you can tell Apple that TF International Analyst Ming-Chi Kuo said so. We talked yesterday about the lengthening wait times for iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max, as well as the apparent ready availability of iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Plus. Roughly 72 hours into the ordering process, Young MC is ready to pass judgment. In the Medium post, the analyst said pre-order results for iPhone 14 Pro Max Pro and two standard models are good, neutral, and bad, respectively, versus iPhone 13 series. You know, he really could have said better, neutral, and bad, though, since the next bit of his post says iPhone 14 Pro Max is doing better than iPhone 13 Pro Max did this time last year. While he's not sure whether Apple will increase orders for the pro end of the line, he does point out that the delivery time of more than four weeks may reflect good demand. I know, that sounds like a big old-fashioned duh, but it actually makes sense to point that out. A year or so ago, he might have pointed to a combination of demand and supply chain issues instead. In fact, he goes a bit further on that, saying the pre-order result for the Pro models proves again that Apple still has numerous loyal and sticky customers amid the deteriorating economy. He's really not sure whether Apple will increase builds for the Pro phones, though, saying whether Apple will increase Pro orders depends on how long the strong demand for Pro models can last amid the recession. Now, if you're wondering about everything else... It is just terrible, in his estimation. The analyst sees a growing likelihood that Apple will cut orders for iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Plus. The way he sees it, the fact that the consumer end phones will still be in stock on launch day reflects lackluster demand. According to the analyst, as it stands now, the pre-order results for iPhone 14 and 14 Plus is worse than iPhone SE 3 and iPhone 13 mini, SE 3 and 13 Mini both suffering from an order cut in the first half of 2022. The iPhone 14 Plus is the replacement for iPhone 13 Mini, he continues. However, this new product's pre-order result is significantly lower than expected, meaning Apple's product segmentation strategy for the standard models fails this year. Funny enough, fails is what turned up in most of the headlines around Ming-Chi Kuo's medium post. 
The way he sees it, Apple may cut iPhone 14 and 14 Plus shipment forecasts for November and beyond within a few weeks if the demand for the 14 and 14 Plus doesn't improve after the launch. Worth noting, things have actually changed a tiny bit since the TF International Analyst posted to Medium. I did a quick check for iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Plus Monday evening. While I did not try every storage and color combination, the several I did try for iPhone 14 show shipping has slipped. They're no longer showing delivery on the 16th of September. Instead, they show delivery between the 20th and the 22nd, with in-store pickup available on the 17th of September. Times for iPhone 14 Plus were unchanged. They still show delivery for the 7th of October. Monday was new operating system day. The Cupertino company hit with press releases yesterday, announcing the availability of iOS 16 and watchOS 9. The other ones just didn't get press releases. Previously known features highlighted in Apple's press release around the iOS update include the more informative and customizable lock screen, changes in messages, including the ability to edit and unsend, new tools for mail, visual lookup and live text enhancements, Apple's implementation of pass keys, and a whole lot more. I stress previously known features before because Apple did slip in a surprise on Monday. In the press release fine print, Apple teased a feature called Clean Energy Charging. Due in an update later this year, Apple's press release says the feature aims to decrease the carbon footprint of the iPhone by optimizing charging times for when the grid is using cleaner energy sources. That will be available later this year, as I say. The way it stands now, it is a U.S.-only feature. Shifting our focus to the chronometer, Apple's release on watchOS 9 highlights such features as new and expanded watch faces, updates to the workout app, the redesigned compass app, more granular sleep tracking, the FDA-approved AFib history feature, the app to help manage one's medications, cycle tracking updates, and that list also goes on. While AFib history is good to go here in the States, it's gotten the green light lots of other places as well. According to the press release fine print on that feature, it has received a number of local clearances and approvals from health authorities around the world and will be available in more than 100 countries and territories, including the U.S., Canada, Europe, Hong Kong, Mexico, South Africa, the U.K., and more. The same fine print says that AFib history will hit Australia later this year. True confession time. I did not update my software midday Monday. I've done first day upgrades too many times in the past. I know how they go. It's not that there's going to be a problem. It's just they take forever. Then you spend the rest of the day playing with the new features rather than, you know, working. And so if my work didn't involve what was going on with the updates, I would have missed entirely the problem a number of people did have. Apple Insider says folks trying to update to iOS 16 and iOS 15.7, we'll get to that, got caught in a terms and conditions loop. According to the piece, new terms and conditions sometimes appear when opening the App Store for the first time after a software update. Users who clicked agree were met with an undefined error likely related to the volume of users updating. Apple acknowledged the issue. Apple fixed the issue. That likely led to people just stuck waiting rather than getting stuck in a TNC loop. It's not really new, but we should go ahead and address the release of iOS 15.7 and iPadOS 15.7. Security-driven updates these. A piece from Mac Rumors says they address multiple kernel vulnerabilities in addition to fixing security issues with contacts, maps, Safari, Safari extensions, shortcuts, and WebKit. The report has Apple indicating that one of the kernel vulnerabilities was actively exploited, so even if you can't or don't want to update to iOS 16, iOS and iPadOS 15.7 are something you should probably do. 
See also macOS Monterey 12.6. Though macOS Ventura is not due out until later this year, a separate piece from Mac Rumors says Apple did release a security-focused update for the current Mac operating system on Monday. On this one, the site says macOS Monterey 12.6 addresses a number of kernel vulnerabilities, as well as issues with Maps, iMovie, ATS, Media Library, and Package Kit. Not unlike the iOS and iPadOS updates, Apple does point out that one of the kernel vulnerabilities is reported to have been actively exploited. The piece says Apple has also released a macOS Big Sur 11.7 update with security fixes. Doubling back to the iOS update, did I say don't want to upgrade is an option? Yes, as a matter of fact, I did. Just like last year, Apple is giving users the ability to keep up with the latest security fixes without having to move operating systems. 9to5Mac ran a piece Monday saying that users running iOS 15 now have the option to install iOS 15.7 or iOS 16. Apple did the same thing last year during the iOS 14 to 15 transition. Doesn't seem to be a feature for people who want to stay behind, though. Rather, it's probably for businesses or individuals that just aren't ready to make the move yet. Apple dropped the option to stay on iOS 14 a few months after iOS 15 hit. That Apple will remove the option to stay on iOS 15 within the next few months feels like a pretty safe bet. Two more OS updates about which to tell you both by way of Mac rumors. First, the Cupertino company released tbOS 16 on Monday. Made for Apple TV 4K and Apple TV HD, the report says the update brings game controller support for the Nintendo Joy-Cons and the Nintendo Pro Controller, brings cross-device connectivity, a feature that lets developers integrate Apple TV apps with iPhone, iPad, and Apple Watch apps to unlock new experiences on Apple TV. It improves the handling of multiple profiles on Apple TV and will improve interoperability between smart home accessories from different companies once the Matter smart home standard goes live. As for the other OS, Mac Rumor says version 16 of the HomePod software is available. Stabs and perfs only for this one. Version 16 of the software includes general performance and stability improvements, according to the report. More news in a moment, but first a word from today's sponsor, BetterHelp. There are so many ways that counseling just doesn't work. If you get the wrong counselor, it's no good. If you're not ready to fix whatever problem is troubling you, it's no good. If you are ready, though, there's better help. A therapist doesn't fix everything. Rather, they help you find your own solutions. That's why you have to be ready. Now, what's great about better help, it is ready when you are. They've got hundreds of counselors ready to match within 48 hours. Sessions happen on the phone, the laptop, the tablet. You're not bound by who's around you, and you work together however is most comfortable. I like that. I like how easy BetterHelp makes it to find a therapist, and I like how easy BetterHelp makes it to change should you find your first counselor just isn't the right fit. I've had a bad fit once with better help, could have quit, tried again instead, and ended up with a much better counselor for me. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash macOSken today to get 10% off your first month. That's better H E L P dot com slash macOS can betterhelp dot com slash macOS can and thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's show. The cost of replacing batteries in the iPhone 14 line has gone up. 
A piece from Ars Technica says for out-of-warranty phones and units not covered by Apple Care Plus, swapping batteries in the latest iPhones will cost 99 bucks at an Apple store with variable pricing through Apple authorized service providers. The new price is $30 higher than what Apple charges for iPhone 10, 11, 12, and 13 batteries, and $50 higher than iPhone 8 or earlier. While the jump does seem big, Ars Technica seems to see it as more of a correction. In the wake of 2017's battery gate scandal, Apple dropped the price of replacing batteries down to 29 bucks. About a year later, the company raised the price to $69, $10 less than the service had been before Battery Gate. That price held until last week's introduction of iPhone 14, according to the report. While Apple is not doing business in Russia, new iPhones might be available. That is the word from Apple Insider. Apple sees sales in Russia when that country invaded Ukraine last March. However, the piece cites a Reuters report saying... Russia has a scheme in place that allows retailers to import products from overseas without needing permission from the trademark owner. That means iPhones might be available in the country, though they won't be cheap and they won't get there soon. The piece says one carrier has launched orders for iPhone 14. 128 gigabyte models are up for the equivalent of $1,398 U.S., close to twice the price here in the States. The carrier has also warned that delivery of orders could take up to 120 days to complete and that orders may be cancelled if the carrier has too much trouble importing them. Otherwise, having a normal day. And finally today, as is likely the case with most of the rest of the country, a piece from Mac Rumors says Apple stores in the UK will be closed next Monday, the 19th of September, marked as a bank holiday by King Charles III. The piece says next Monday is the date planned for the state funeral of Charles' mother, Queen Elizabeth II. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by Simply Safe. Get a free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring at simplysafe.com slash macOS can. This show is also sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash macOS can. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.